Kim Suk didn't stop at the marina. Stretching his arms and flapping the gills on his chest, he kept walking into the ocean. Down and down he went, further and further into the sea until the waves and the creaking of ships were muted to his pointed ears. His stride turned into stroke as he watched small schools of fish dart past him, and not long after his descent he could see the tops of the city, the wonderful bubbles made of glass and magic. Passing through the barrier he could feel a slight change in pressure and a noticeable change in temperature as the oceanic folk swam past bright pinks and oranges of coral reefs and the slate blue spires that made homes and buildings. But he was not here for the warm glow and the smooth texture of the city, for he pulled himself lazily through the streets and down an alley, ending in a heavy metal hatch. Twisting the handle, he found himself pulled into an antechamber. As the door closed behind him, he could hear the rush of water furiously purge from the space. As his clothes stuck to his turquoise skin, he traveled into the next chamber. To his side, he found a damp lab coat, and to his front, a network of tunnels and chambers that he knew better than the back of his own hand. Kim Suk was late, but he didn't care. Word had it that his project was ending, so what more could they do to him now? Winding through the grimy, dripping hallways, he found the lab he had called home for the past year and a half. Small lights were mounted on the corners, and lining the walls were large tubes filled with a viscous green liquid. Combining those with a few monitors and screens, the room was dimly lit all around, but this was no problem for his elven co-workers. Kim Suk hated them always gathered together whispering in their elvish tongue, but it didn't matter anymore. His project was being terminated, and he would likely never see them again. Walking past the tubes, he caught glimpses of the people inside of them. Men, women, all different ages and sizes, and none were too terribly special, at least to the untrained eye. But it was the Goliath he found the most perplexing, even today. Where did she come from? He pondered. The war made sure her kind His train of thought was cut off by a booming metallic voice in the room. He turned to the source, something he couldn't quite make out. It was tall and cylindrical, and flashed with light each time it spoke. It was flanked by two strange men, each clad in green leather military uniforms, and obscuring their faces was a similar green gas mask. The voice boomed again, shaking Suck as well as the elves sitting in front of him. I was hoping that this division would be more promising. Or at the very least, those working here could show up on time. Kim Suk cautiously took his seat before replying. I was under the impression my project was to be terminated. Had I known there would be an inspection on my last day, I surely would have made more of an effort. Suk could feel his confidence return to him as he put his shoes up on the table and began lounging back into his chair. It's not every day that the Chancellor graces your lab, Suk said with a smile. Oh, sorry. I meant to say former Chancellor. Suck had a smile plastered onto his face as he watched his co-workers cower at his response. He was so engrossed by his supposed victory, he noticed too late that one of the masked men was gone, as his face was slammed into the table only seconds after. Fuck, they're fast. Suck gasped out in pain as his arm was bent backwards by the guard with supernatural strength, and the blinding lights of the Chancellor flashed once again. If you are done with your incessant chatter, I have some wonderful news for you. Your Bellis experiment has come to a close, and Phase 2 has been approved and will begin effective immediately. Kim wasn't sure if it was the pain in his arm or the blow he took to his head, but he felt nauseous. He didn't know what to say or even expect, as the Bellis experiment was just a research project. It didn't have a Phase 2. 